Hello, I'm Steve Nunn, President and CEO of The Open Group. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, where we highlight the various components and leading experts of the Architects Toolkit, a collated portfolio of the most pertinent technology standards for enterprise architects. During the series, I'll be calling on a number of recognized experts who will bring their particular insights on how to most effectively use the various tools in the Architects Toolkit. We'll have a mix of interviews, panel sessions, and pre-recorded presentations along the way. While all standards of the Open Group are designed so they can be adopted independently of one another, the greatest value for an organization can be derived when they're used in unison. The sum of the parts should be greater than the whole. In the Architects Toolkit, we have collated a portfolio of the most pertinent ones for architects together, all in one place. For most of these tools, certification from the Open Group is also available, so practitioners can demonstrate that they have the skills required, and recruiters can take the guesswork out of the recruitment process, all backed up by our Open Badges program. In a recent news announcement I read, JP Morgan had been fined over $200 million for failing to keep employee communication records. Turns out their execs were, according to the article, addicted to the use of WhatsApp. This is an example of crowdsourcing gone wrong. Just cause you like WhatsApp for making plans to meet up for drinks with friends doesn't make it an enterprise worthy solution. Crowdsourcing is great for innovation and for reframing of problems, but enablement that doesn't govern is frankly throwing all professional caution to the wind. Even crowdsourcing design by allowing people to set up their own processes and structures for approved tools within an organization can lead to a mess. Think illegal rave versus organized event. Governance may be a much maligned term, but it is essential for anything outside of arranging a Christmas party. Welcome everyone to uh, Toolkit Tuesday. Um, greetings wherever you are. Um, glad to have you with us. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us. And uh, off to a great start as usual with Paul Homan of IBM there and, and some thoughts. So yeah, governance is a much maligned term, but um, Two hundred million dollars is a is a big penalty. So uh, good good uh, reminder to pay attention there and the uh, the applicability of different technologies for uh, for different things in our lives. So um, welcome again. We are um, entering the uh, the the last one of this series of uh, Toolkit Tuesdays today. I'll say a little more about that later. But uh, we reached the end of. Uh, what in programming language would be considered um, season two. Um, and we have a great uh, season finale for you today. But uh, just before I get there, um, a few words about uh, the platform that we're using, WebEx, and uh, how to ask questions specifically. So please, if you want to ask a question of our presenter today, please uh, do that through the Q&A channel. Um, that's uh, found by clicking on the three little dots in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Click on there and you'll get the chance to click on Q&A. Please use that for the for the um, questions and use the chat channel as um, a couple of you are starting to do. Um, I, I think I kicked it off. Let us know where in the world you're joining us from. Um, it's uh, it's always a, a, a nice spread of, of geographies and uh, it, it's always it's always pleasing to see and gives everyone a little um, a uh, little bit of interest to see where we're coming from. So today, without without further ado, we are going to uh, dive into our topic, which is the um, portfolio of digital standards um, in the Open Group. And um, to take us through that today, we have um, some of the someone that knows most about it, um, which is great. Our a resident expert, 
um, Sonia Gonzalez. And Sonia is the digital portfolio manager with the Open Group. And she has over 30 years of experience as a business and enterprise architect consultant in different fields and industry verticals. Her professional experience as a project manager includes leading highly effective teams and applying different frameworks, best practices, and tools. So without further ado, a big warm welcome to uh, Toolkit Tuesday for, or welcome back in fact, for Sonia Gonzalez. Over to you, Sonia. Okay, first of all, when, while we are down uh, uploading the content, thank you everybody for joining today. I'm going to lead you to our digital portfolio of standards and uh, Thank you for that. So we're going to start first giving an overview of what the how the world has changed now. Uh, this is today's topic after COVID-19. I think even before that, uh, we were experimenting a digital explosion. But after COVID, I think those challenges became even bigger. And so companies need to overcome that, need to adjust and very quickly. Actually, some of them really need had to reinvent themselves and for that you really need to become a digital and that's where this digital journey starts and and there are different building blocks and things you, that we need to do uh, for doing so and that's where our digital portfolio of standard it's uh, one of the main elements in here and that's our actual offering um, so this is what I was explaining at the beginning that the world has changed we are facing now what we call the digital economy in which the trends are not only technological, even though technology is driving change, but it's also business oriented. It should be business oriented. So uh, trends like, for example, uh, Web 3.0 and trust technologies and quantum computers and uh, blockchain are, are things that are here to stay and they're changing the way we do business. Uh, also, the fact that we need to be more sustainable now in the use of those technologies. Uh, remote working is something that even though in some uh, countries is going every now, it is here to stay. And also the way that we use our daily devices, as smart devices now, is uh, bringing greater changes into the industry. Therefore, organizations need to adapt into that and to be able to compete in this new space, in this new environment that we are facing now. So the pandemic has changed the way we work, the way we live, the way we interact, but especially has created a great impact in our customers, which are now demanding more and more digital services. This is a study that was published last year by McKenzie that shows like, this is not new for us, but it's like putting numbers on that. That is very clear that in all different regions in the world, you will see that in the, between 2018 and 2020, just when the pandemic started and the lockdown, you will see how uh, mostly we almost had 20 or almost 50% increase in the use of accelerated digital technologies and digital adoptions. This is very clear, this trend, and also how customers' interactions became digital, uh, in part because of the lockdowns and the, the fact that supply chains were also cut down, which is another big trend. So people start going more digital and companies need to really uh, make, make an effort to adapt into that. Uh, but the thing is not only the pandemic, because most of these trends are here to stay, even though we are hopefully overcoming the, big, the biggest impact of the pandemic, there are still things that are here to stay. So in this graphic also from the same study, we can see like ch things like changing uh, a customer expectation towards digital uh, has a 63% 60, of increase and it's going to stay, it's going to remind the bars that are in, in light blue are the ones that are showing up, like all these trends are here to stay. For example, the use of cloud technologies is another one. The uh, increased use of remote working, collaboration working as a new business uh, and, and way of working model. Uh, the increased need to use digital services and to consume everything online is also uh, a big increase. And also the way that that we use the the tool change uh, for doing business. Uh, all this uh, uh, business change uh, for product distribution has also have a shift, becoming more regional. So that's also another big impact. So the question now is, being aware that those big changes are here to stay and they are disruptive, especially for companies that are not exactly ready to compete and to have the right capabilities. How are we going to overcome this? 
how organizations need to transform into that. And first, a little bit of like humor in here, it needs to be a clear understanding. And I think even though everybody is talking about digital transformation, and there are, by the way, very good articles and studies in LinkedIn and in the web, there's still certain boom, like the fashion, everybody needs to talk about digital transformation because it's trendy. But at the end of the day, what it is really means to become digital and to have and adopt a digital first enterprise. So it's not about technology. It's not about solving specific issues like video conferencing or having a central centricity in the customer, even though that's important, and going into the cloud and adopting the latest technology is much more than that. Because at the end of the day, digital transformation is, as the words say, a deep organizational change that needs to start from the business. And even though this may seem obvious, it's not clear, at least not why people is trying to do this, there should be some digital distinctions. For example, it's not only to convert information into digital format, even though that's one of the fundamentals, which is digitization. It's also digitalization, meaning the process, the business, operational, and even the financial model needs to change. And at the end of the day, it becomes a digital transformation, meaning that is the data, is the processes, is the platforms, and is the way we are using this digital technologies tool to really transform the organization. So it should be an integration of these different elements and different factors. And above all, we need to build on the trends. You know, a trend, a disruption in the market can be seen like a threat, but also can be seen like an opportunity to explore that and to become better. And actually, there are several examples in the industry of company that due to the COVID effect, they transform and they are becoming more successful now. Of course, there were others that really uh, disappear because they couldn't take this trend. So for example, the digital experience, the digital reality is something that a lot of companies are using now in their advantage. The power of the customer is now more is clear than ever and the, the need to have more analytics, the use of data to really understand our customers and our context. Uh, of course, cloud platforms and the adopting of uh, quantum computing, which is uh, an increased way to process, to increment the processing and the data transform is also there. And going more into the business size, the business operational, and even the financial models need to change also to adapt to this. And of course, it needs to be an element of innovation a new way of serving our customers, new digital products, new digital services. So innovation is becoming also a mandatory practice into that. And also the concept of a digital product, which is something that even though it existed, it is now taking more relevance. Product management also is another important element. And marketing is also it's a new way of marketing, or doing marketing now, which is more digital. Uh, so all these trends need to be taken, building on all the market is suffering and the disruption should be harvested in the benefit of the companies, of course. So at the end of the day, what is digital transformation? In essence, is to use, make a fundamental strategic change in the in the organization. You will see in this graphic, which is taken by a very good white paper that was, by the way, the foundation of the digital practitioner body of knowledge, the seven levels of digital transformation. We see two major elements in here, the strategy and organizational culture and change. With, without those two big elements, it's impossible to do a real digital transformation because at the end, it's using digital technologies to transform the human experiences, the processes, and the operation of the company. So in the center, of course, we have the infrastructure, all the IT assets that are become the digital platform, but also we have all the ecosystem, the business model, the customer experience, customer is now in the center of everything, the product and service, the concept of a digital product, and of course, the need to transform the way we do business is also in the center. And it's a transformation effort, it's an evolution. It is it's practically impossible to change a company from one day to the other. It's something that should be done incrementally, but being sure that we are offering value while we are doing this transformation. We can see this like a set of building blocks. We have the business model in the center. We have the strategy. We have innovation. We have security, which is not only from the point of view of technology, 
information security. Security has a principle. Uh, we see operational operational need to also evolve uh, digital platforms, uh, new elements there are in their new digital technologies. The use of data analytics is there as well. Uh, security from the point of view of infrastructure, uh, especially now that security cybercrime has really uh, um, going bigger and, and more and riskier uh, also as a consequence of all this new digital explosion and like we have mentioned before the customer need, needs to be in the center and to pursue a real cultural change this implies like for really start a digital transformation you need to really have a big sponsor it's not something that should be done from the IT space. It's something that should be have a higher level sponsor, meaning like the CIO, the CDO, uh, and the, the main leaders of the, these different business units are the ones that need to pursue this cultural change. But how we can start this journey? And this is why the big question starts. Okay, everything is clear. We have trends, we have challenges. Uh, we could overcome them to improve our way of doing business. But on top of that, how we can really make this transformation? How, how can I start doing this? First, we need to understand and identify our current capabilities. You know, if you don't understand what you have, you cannot change it. That's, by the way, it's a basic principle of enterprise architecture. You cannot change what you cannot describe and understand. You need to be aware in your ecosystem, the market trends, like I was explaining before, building on the trends, your competitors that even though they are your competitors can also be your partners. So that's even a different way of conceiving your competitors. It starts small and deliver incrementally. This is also an architecture, an agile principle, you know, the concept of minimal viable product also applies in here. You cannot pretend to change everything, just you need to choose an area or areas in which you may deliver value, will deliver value and start providing that value, creating value into your company or for your customers. Again, like I was saying, you need to pursue sponsorship and cultural change of all that. Without that, you're not going to really progress on this. It should be a new business operational model assessment. You know, the way you do business is the start point. And whenever you have that clear, then you can identify which one, which one are the changes that you will need to do in your digital platforms and your infrastructure. Innovate, of course, from the business and technical perspective is another key element, but you need to be aware of your technical depth. You know, there have been several examples that organizations that went into new way of doing things, uh, using agile methodologies and using cloud and all the trends. And at the end, they fail because they couldn't understand the technical depth. And at the end, as you know, if you don't address that, it will eventually kill your business. And you can start your, your transformation journey using a scale model. In here, that can be, is one of the most powerful elements into the DP book which has the ones that you are familiar with the DP book, it has a model that it's suitable to scale, starting from the individual, the founder, which can be compared with the, going with a smaller piece of your company. Then you go to the team, which is a higher level, the team of teams, and finally the enduring enterprise. This means like this can be applied to small companies and worldwide companies, and also means that through this journey, you can start small using one area of the company and then pursuing bigger challenges in time whenever you have been proving value to your customers. And then you can put all these different building blocks and so kind of like a reference architecture like this in here that is in a way uh, combining all these elements, uh, strategy, innovation, the need to transform your business, your operation, security, uh, the need to also make a change in your organizational structure, something that is less hierarchy and more flat, that will allow to contribute and to be more agile, uh, cross-cutting collaboration between the different uh, units and uh, organizational management and all this. And you will see that here that we start seeing some of the elements of the digital portfolio of standards. So this means like even though the DP book is the fundamental, the body of knowledge for digital that we offer in our portfolio of standards, it's not the main and the only element into the portfolio of standards. The idea is to use this along with the TOGA standard, uh, addressing enterprise architecture, the OAA, um, uh, from the point of view of Agile and digital has a dual transformation to use, of course, our security standards because security is a key component 
on into this the IT for IT standard, especially now uh, the snapshot that we published recently, which is has the, the digital product in the center, and and also we can even consider going into some verticals in which uh, digital, of course, has a lot of impact. And that is what we call the open group digital portfolio of standard, which is this umbrella in which we collide for different standards. Again, the IT for IT standard, the DP book, the TOGAP standard, the OAA, the ARCHIMED standard, security standards. And also we can see how this can be applicable to specific verticals, like for example, the healthcare area of space, commercial aviation, open footprint. And because in all of them, in all the different verticals, uh, also digital is is one of the key imperatives. And there are three main elements that need to be present in this portfolio. Then first, it should be fit for purpose, meaning that it should be something applicable to the industry because it, it doesn't have to be something that is not usable. It has to be usable and useful for, a, for consumers, for the digital practitioners. It should be consistent. You know, because even though there is a collection of standards, our main goal is for them to make them bigger than each one of them, the zoom is bigger than each one of them. And also from the point of view of how you're going to consume it to make it more findable, usable, and easier to be um, to be used without going to have a set of a big set of books. So that's also one of our main objectives. Our vision, very quickly, because we would like to give some time for the Q&A, is to position the open group as this premier uh, source for open standards in the digital world. And this is our journey. It's, first, we are working very heavily along with our members uh, to com compose, to integrate this digital portfolio of standard, which implies a lot of cross collaboration between different forums, like the Architecture Forum, Archimate, the Digital Practitioner Working Group, the Security Forum, and, and, and the IT for IT Forum, among others. Um, having this center, as the DP book has the center for the evolution, also offering practical guidance in a cross coding view, and also to pursue awareness, visibility, uh, because it is important to promote adoption and use and also the fact that we are going for a more usable and friendly interface for consuming the standard we are confident that it's going to uh, improve this awareness and above all we need to be aware of the voice of the customer the customer is in the center and that also applies for this specific portfolio and of course the final objective is to become the digital for enterprise which is our current model um, okay, this is what I have. This is just some resources that you may use. You will see in here some links to the to our digital enterprise page and to the open group site, and also specific links in which you can uh, make, have an overview of our standards and, of course, certification, which is a key component in all this portfolio. You can also find certification for all these standards in there. That's what I have. And apologies for the technical issues at the beginning of the session. I hope this made sense. And now uh, I think we still have a few minutes for some Q&A. So back to you, Steve. We do, Sonia. Thank you very much. It's, um, yeah, apologies, everyone, for the beginning. But um, uh, great, great recovery, Sonia. And um, you've really uh, whetted people's appetite about the digital portfolio, I know. And um, there, there are quite a few standards that, that comprise that portfolio and um, lots to get into. So do... Um, uh, do take a look at the, uh, the the relevant area on the Open Group um, website and you'll be able to get to the individual standards that, that make up that portfolio. And our goal going forward, as Sonia said, is to bring those um, uh, closer together in the sense of, particularly in the sense of usability, um, which is what uh, what everyone needs. So let's uh, let's go straight to a um, to, uh, question. Obviously, when you, you talk about uh, digital transformation there's a lot of focus on technology uh, understandably it's a it's a key part of it but the the research so far shows that really the biggest issue that organizations often face is is actual cultural change um you know how do you make the cultural change is there anything in in our digital portfolio that will help um the audience who are who are looking for for guidance help them on that cultural aspect uh, yeah, thank you for that question, Steve. It's, it's one an important one. I will say, like uh, in the DP book, uh, like explained, you have the different scale model, and there are different practices in there. Uh, and it speaks a little bit about how you make this cultural change. Uh, but the other one in which I will say that it's uh, 
also great content is in the Open Agile Architecture, the OAA. In there, you will find a lot of very interesting guidance how how can you restructure your organization uh, following a less hierarchy model to something that is flat, flatter and uh, more suitable for having an agile, uh, an agile way of working. And not only that, but also closer to having this cross-cutting collaboration between the different units, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you are doing in your company. At the end, you are you need to be working for the greater good. So that it's also very good guidance in there. And I would say that in the IT for IT version three, you know, as you know, the, that's a reference architecture. And in one of the, the first value change for that, it talks precisely about the strategy to portfolio and in there there are some mention about for example of need of having enterprise architecture uh, which is also something that start with a cultural change you know for example also in the TOGAP standard uh, if you don't make a proper stakeholder assessment you will not be able to pursue change so stakeholder assessment is also a way to pursue change you identify your bigger contributors you identify uh, which one of these stakeholders are the ones that have more power and are more influence of the ones that you need to address first. So I guess there are guidance in several of them that you can consume. Okay. Thank you for that. That's a, I mean that's a key uh, key aspect. And and just uh, given given the time, just one more one more um, question. I see um, Sonia, and um, that is let me um, just see here. Um, uh do you, yes uh do, 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 do. let's see i've only got time for one so i uh, i see a couple in the chat um uh which resource um can guide uh, in the development of metrics for measuring digital transformation programs the topic of metrics and measurement um anything in in the portfolio that will that will help people assess what the right metrics would be I think that's a very good one. I'm trying to think it over. Metrics. I think metrics has exactly like a dashboard or hierarchy of metrics. I cannot think right now in some specific standard that will have that. There's, of course, guidance. For example, in the OAA that talks about how you deliver value to the end user, which is the end of the day what we need for metrics. And and also same in the DP book, there's areas in which it's mentioned that how you can really measure business value. But something like metrics could actually be a very interesting topic for a guide, mm -hmm. which is precisely uh, like I was mentioning, the idea is to evolve this and we are working with members to evolve this backlog of topics. So I will add that into the backlog because yeah. I'm not no, certain that we have that specific uh, in there, but it's actually something very important. It, it is absolutely. I mean, obviously, and what they might be will vary enormously from uh, from organization to an organization. But there's probably something in there that will uh, that will be common to uh, common to many, I'm sure. And the, and the tracking of the digital transformation program as it as it goes on um, it will be um, will be key. Um, Sonia, in the interest of, of time, we're going to leave it there in terms of, of questions. Um, thank you to those who, who submitted the questions. But um, um, we will hear more about the um, um, portfolio of digital standards over the coming uh, over the coming months uh, from the Open Group. But uh, meanwhile, thank you, Sonia, for um, um, giving us the introduction and the oversight today. Appreciate it okay. very much. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you. So before we go, thank you for uh, attending today, folks. Uh, I said I would um, I, I would come back to the fact that we're going to have a little break from Toolkit Tuesday and back next on September 30th. That will be when uh, season three starts, um, September, September 20th, sorry, September 20th. Um, Meanwhile, you will be able to and hang on till the to the outro slide at the end here and that will give you the details. But um, in essence, uh, when you get your your um, need for your Toolkit Tuesday fix, as I'm sure you will over the over the summer break, uh, go to the Open Group YouTube channel and you'll be able to binge watch to your heart's content. Um, we've got quite a few under our belt today and um, you'll be able to uh, to go there and um, catch up on maybe some of the ones that you've missed. Um, we'll be assessing all the uh, questions or have been assessing all the questions that we've got over the over the different episodes. And uh, one of our popular ones was where we gathered them together and asked our, our resident panel of experts some of those questions. Uh, I can expect that we will be doing that again. 
um, in season three. Um, but uh, we will also come back with some exciting news when we're back. So uh, I'll leave it there in, cliffhang in cliffhanger style. Um, but uh, look, looking forward to see you all, seeing you all again um, on September 20th. Meanwhile, thank you for joining us. Thank you to all our speakers and experts who've made Talk It Tuesday um, the success it's been so far. And um, have a great summer wherever you are. And uh, thank you for joining us. Um, we appreciate your time. Bye for now. Okay. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>